Alba has suffered from chronic asthma for nearly 20 years. She says living in the city and avoiding asthma attacks is not always easy. If it's a bad air quality day, I try not to do things in the middle of the day. I'll try to do them in, in the early morning or in the evening. I'm really careful about where I walk, um, like I was talking about the bus um, fumes, yes. <laughs> Um, I try to stay close to the buildings as opposed to closer to the sidewalks. Lorin is not alone. According to the American Lung Association, more than 20 million people suffer from asthma in the United States, and the number could grow. Really the environment is a huge trigger for me, especially on days of bad air quality. The buses, the smog, the pollution, all of those things can really trigger my asthma. The new study conducted jointly by the Environmental Protection Agency and the University of North Carolina found that levels of ozone smoke that until now have been considered safe actually pose a serious public health threat. The latest studies on ozone are telling us that lower levels of ozone can be really dangerous for us to breathe. Janice Nolan is with the American Lung Association in Washington. These studies looked at healthy young adults. They looked at levels that we had previously thought were pretty safe. And when those healthy young adults were exposed in clinical settings in a laboratory to ozone by itself, it caused some real breathing problems for them. It was measurable. The ozone damaging the lungs of these young adults is an invisible gas made of three oxygen atoms. When it's inhaled, ozone can irritate and inflame the sensitive internal tissues of the respiratory system. Nolan adds that ozone is usually accompanied by particle pollution, such as diesel engine exhaust, which can cause further problems like heart attacks and strokes. And while most causes of ozone are found in urban environments, Nolan says ozone smoke can be found almost anywhere. The ozone that's in the atmosphere from the urban centers blows and it goes into other places that may not necessarily be urban. Some of the national parks, for example, and tops of mountains in this country have extraordinarily high levels of ozone. Over the past 40 years, a federal law known as the Clean Air Act has enabled many cities and towns to reduce ozone and other forms of urban pollution. But Nolan says the American Lung Association believes much more needs to be done. But in our last report, we had an estimate of over 175 million Americans who lived in areas in this country that we gave an F for air pollution. The EPA study of ozone smoke notes that the people most at risk include children, senior citizens, people with lung diseases such as asthma, and those who work or exercise outdoors. Additional studies are on their way to measure the long-term health effects of ozone in combination with other forms of air pollution. This is Sulima Palacio, VOA News. I'm Lorraine Alba. It's Janice Nolan.